The Agenda with Michael Knight on News Radio 560 KPQ and KPQ.com. It's 138. Good afternoon to you. The show is called The Agenda. Every afternoon at 1 o'clock, I'm Michael Knight, and my special guest is Brian Beaumont. Brian's from the new company here in town called Subsplash. You can check him out at subsplash.com, figure out what we're talking about. But let's begin. Brian, I met you just, uh, was it, it was last week when the governor came to town for the roundtable on yeah. initiatives that are bringing new, new companies to town and the broadband hookup in town that allowed you and your subsplash people to, to begin the, the, the business that you're into right now. Why did you choose Wenatchee? Yeah, Wenatchee was uh, selected because of the infrastructure of the network, uh, the high-speed internets, the um, also the low cost of living, and our uh, founder, uh, Tim and Christy Turner, also have family connections here. That helps. Yeah, absolutely. So that otherwise was, uh, you might know we're here, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, everyone knows Wenatchee as the recreation hub, um, just over the mountains, and a uh, few people, it seemed, over on the other side knew of the actual. Uh, internet and uh, infrastructure here with uh, fiber and everything. How long has Subsplash been up? About 10 years or so. Started off as a design consultancy, and then um, our founder, Tim, built a mobile app for his church that he was going to. And it was the very first mobile app ever out there for a church, and so he started getting phone calls from churches and ministries and nonprofits around the, wor- around the world saying, hey, I want a mobile app too. Uh, do things like post sermons and events and giving and things like that. So was this the market driving the subsplash development? People saying, this is what we want your your device for. Yep. yep. The, oh, the iPhone was just brand new. Mobile apps were brand new. And so he, he knew the latest technology, user experiences, his, uh, his professionalism. And uh, he, he just wanted to help um, his church build a mobile app. And then he just started getting a bunch of phone calls, which formed the organization of subsplash. How many people involved now here in Wenatchee? Uh, in Wenatchee right now, it's just uh, me, and uh, Tim also has a has a place over here that him and his wife have owned for the past, I think, uh, 15 years or so. And then uh, I have a co-manager coming over, uh, Arthur, who will be over here by the end of the month as well. So you're actually relocating all the operations here? No, just, uh, just actually uh, customer service and then consultation, uh, low-level uh, or entry-level jobs uh, will be over here. Most of our developers will be over in Seattle still, but we'll come over periodically and work and work with the team. Good question. What does a developer do? <laughs> developer is working with a lot of different coding languages and building our different infrastructure, both on the mobile app and the website. And so making sure that they communicate together because we're considered a mobile app platform where people can actually build their own mobile app instead of having to pay tens of thousands of dollars to have one customized from the ground up. And that saves the churches quite a bit of money. Quite a bit of money and time as well. Absolutely. Or any of your customers. Do you have customers that are, that are not churches? We do. Yep. Yep. Anyone who fits our, mo- our mobile app platform will serve. So primarily it's been churches since that was the very first one we ever built. Right. And then we do lots, a lot of schools, a lot of nonprofits, some businesses as well. So if you want to get the, the word out there about what's going on with your organization, events, news, social media ties, post videos, um, a lot of nonprofits can allow people to make donations to them as well. So for a Kiwanis Club or a school or a church, Absolutely. why do we need Subsplash? What, 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 what will we have if we make an agreement with you? Yeah, what you get is the actual service of Subsplash to help you build your own mobile app. So that's your own mobile app account to build your own mobile app. The training and tech support, basically as much as you need to help get your app up and running. So we provide the services to actually help you build your own mobile app versus doing it for you, which would be a lot more expensive and time-intensive. And what are the features of that app? I guess I, uh, what I choose, right? Yep. It's uh, it's whatever you want. Primary ones that people use are things like event listings, sending out a push notification to everybody who has the mobile app to keep people updated about announcements, changes, and things like that, media posting, social media integrations. If you have your own management systems as well, like a school or a church, uh, that they want to use for logins and signups, they can also put that in that mobile app as well. So the days of the church newsletter that came out on Saturday <laughs> are over. Not over yet. There's still a place for them. People still want hard copy, but primarily people want everything in their pocket, in their mobile phone as fast as possible. Because we're actually talking about, well, not it's not a club, but it is an organization of like-minded people who do things together but don't, see each other all the time yeah. so they have this is the way for them to stay together and stay at exactly. least current when life gets busy exactly keep it on the go as fast as possible and everything everybody wants everything in one location and um, on average people use their cell phones about three to five hours a day um, has been the latest statistics and it's simple enough for 
Pastor Bill to be able to run it or somebody on his staff to, uh, yeah. to, to, keep, to keep it to keep it going. Yep, if you got basic uh, you know how you like up, we like we like updates. <laughs> we don't yep. want to see the same page as we saw yesterday. Exactly. Yep, yep. Log in really quick, make a quick change, create a new event, send out a blast to everybody. It's very fast, user friendly, um, but we have as much tech support as needed if, if someone needs a little help. It is a um, I mean once you start something like that, then it is a, it's a daily responsibility for somebody. Yeah, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we, we just because of the update nature of it. I mean, I don't know how fast Facebook updates. That's a bad example compared to. Uh, <laughs> but the but the fact is, you, you usually don't go back and see the same posts again. They're gone. True. They're, they're washed away. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. like our our phone experience or our information intake experience to be fresh each time. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. It probably takes a church or an organization with our app services about half an hour to an hour a week. To update new information, a lot of it is just a one-time build where they'll have features in there that people can access when they want to go look at them. And other things are dynamic, things like events, things like social media are automatically updated already because when you update your Facebook channel, it'll automatically update the app as well. That helps. Um, we've streamlined a lot of things, yeah. What's it like? I, uh, I did one startup once, and it was like a multimedia startup. I remember everyone was exhausted, mm -hmm. and then we launched. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the exhaustion, you just had to get used to it because there was no place to go. Mm -hmm. The hours got longer after we launched than, mm -hmm. than they were beforehand. Yeah. And uh, I remember you just got used to being exhausted. Is that still the way you do it? You know, uh, <clears throat> after after 10 years or so, um, there's been a lot of uh, frustrations for sure, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of, uh, you know, complications sometimes with uh, having to submit to things like the Apple App Store, Google Play Store for the mobile apps. You have to be aware of what those changes are and adapt and constantly adapting. Uh, past few years, we've implemented great leadership who have amazing experiences with their own companies and also coming from very large companies from Amazon um, and places like that who have been around the block with their own uh, companies and are creating great systems and a great structure for all of our employees, about 90 people or so now. What's the good part about relocating a high-tech company to Wenatchee? Yep, so opening up a new office over here just really allowed um, uh, people to come over. Um, or what we're trying to do is hire over here. Um, but for myself in particular, as we were looking for a, a house to buy in the Seattle area, you know, for the last year and a half. Well, there's lots of them. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of houses to buy. Yep. Oh, yeah. There's just one catch. <laughs> want, just a, just a, just a few catches, yeah. Um, so we, we were looking for a, a, a different place to uh, to live. We're both small-town people, my wife and I, and um, been to Wenatchee before, and I grew, I grew up playing, you know, tournaments over here with uh, baseball and basketball and things like that. So I knew the area a little bit and have some family friends, and so it just seemed like a perfect fit when this uh, came about. And I think it was about a year in the process to uh, partner with uh, with Pibus and uh, with uh, – Port of Chelan and uh, worked with us really part, well. Part of that incubation room that they have there, right? Exactly. Yep. Can the you annex. describe that, please? Yeah, so it's the annex building right next to Pibus Market, and we are going to be in the uh, second floor of the um, of the building uh, in office spaces that they're creating now, uh, primarily for uh, technology companies. So they're going to wire the entire place, uh, perfect for companies who need um, uh, connectivity at all times. Uh, we'll have some servers there as well. Uh, and then the downstairs, I believe the uh, Chelan can going to have some uh, offices there as well. So when that uh, is, gets finished, I think around mid-August or so, we'll be um, moving in there, and all of our new hires uh, from around here will be there as well. And the Port of Chelan put this together to encourage companies just like yourself to take part. Yeah, Port of Chelan and Pibus, yep, they basically are trying to attract uh, uh, technology companies, companies over here to come into Wenatchee, and um, just to attract new business and especially take advantage of this amazing infrastructure with uh, with a fiber network and everything like that just a no-brainer so do you have everything you need here that you that you might have in Seattle every every element of your technological needs yeah absolutely especially with the network now we're just looking to hire people uh, again looking for entry-level uh, technical support and uh, sales consulting atmosphere where you're just basically explaining what our platform does and helping people get to know our services and then our existing clients helping them optimize everything if they have any questions, be available. Um, so on the computer and working in person with people as well. It may be early to tell, but can you come to grips with the workforce here? Do, are they providing you with the, the people you need, the contacts that you need with the um, 
to for your future hires? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of good organizations here who are helping with that process. We're contacting with the school and local churches as well, and also just personal references as well. People who are looking for either a change um, or if they're looking for a job in technology, and um, they just enjoy being a uh, good customer service and good good consultant with people um, in terms of a service mentality. I noticed at the meeting that we had last week, a number of people used their own personal experience when speaking mm -hmm. about coming from a big company mm -hmm. like Amazon, one fellow from Microsoft. And it's not like they hated their company. It was just a big company. Mm -hmm. And they found themselves being very, very busy doing something that maybe they weren't really as interested in as they might have been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that was the nature of the business. And mm -hmm. it, is, it is the nature of the business. Yeah. And they they left. They'll have to start something on their own, and that's a story probably written 10,000 times a day, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. We even have employees do that as well. Is they'll go to maybe a very large organization and then come back. Either they miss the culture or they want to feel more valued or have more of a, an impact with their day-to-day -day work and actually being able to create things and be a part of a, a company that you can actually see your work creating value for the organization. I know there's a lot said about millennials, but the interesting thing about them, because I have some in my family, <laughs> is that um, they don't take nonsense very well. Mm. They want value in their work for them and the company and for, 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 for every element of that work day. Mm. And it's something that people from previous generations haven't quite come to grips with in terms of people just walking on a job and saying, no, this doesn't do it for me, mm -hmm. and you don't do it for me, and I'm out. Mm -hmm. And they, and mm -hmm. so they blame the person who walks. When I always look at the situation, I say, well, what did you walk out on? Mm -hmm. Microsoft might not be that much of a – might not be a great place to work. It might be, depending on the job you have. Yeah. And I like the fact that the millennials and the people that you were just describing are talking about the value of the work, the type of the work, and whether they're they, whether they are valued too. Yeah, and that's a, some common some group of combinations that not every company is willing to offer their employees. Yeah, yeah. And I don't understand that, but yeah. this is something that you've come to grips with. Yeah, and sometimes you know people check out the, the the grass to see if it's greener on the other side, and they do they do go look, and then they you know maybe they don't realize it's quite as green, so they they do come back to to Subsplash because the atmosphere at Subsplash is amazing. It's very um, feels very family oriented. People really lift you up and encourage you. If you were to go to one of our company meetings, you'd probably laugh at how many times we clap at people's achievements. <laughs> um, That's all right. Lots of lots of encouraging um, atmospheres and uh, and helping people. What about the idea of the next step? I mean, you've mm -hmm. got yourself an app that's 10 years old, mm -hmm. but it's gaining acceptance. You've moved. Mm -hmm. You've relocated to a completely different place. Maybe there's new energy behind it, but are you yeah. going to develop other apps too? Is that on the drawing board? Yeah, so what uh, what our platform is now um, is we keep adding features and services on top of what we've already built. Mm -hmm. So when we first started, we were building everything from scratch. Then we built an entire platform, kind of like a build-your-own templated version of building your own app. We keep adding features and services on that. Then when the market changes, let's say apps become obsolete, we'll, we'll be there as well. So we're an engagement tech company to help organizations communicate reach more people and engage with their audiences is what we are. So if something changes to where apps are no longer going to be relevant, we'll be there as well and keep making changes as, as the industry goes. Do you think your experience in the profession that you've chosen is more important than perhaps your education was, or did you learn everything you needed to know before you actually started working in the tech industry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I come from a education background, at least my family. And so I've always approached sales. And it's funny, cause if you if you were to ask me 20 years ago, if you ever had to be like, no way. Like, I think I won like the shyest person in my high school when I was right. growing up. <laughs> and I, I just enjoy teaching people about our services and about our mission and uh, our product and, um, and how it's impacting. You know, we see on average two to three times the amount of people being reached than there are currently being reached by that organization. And we see a lot more media plays, and we see a lot more people interacting with the organization because it's in a mobile app format. Websites are still great to have, of course, but they're used a lot less these days because people want things fast. They went on their phone and also working with their phone with that technology versus it being a website. So websites are great for first-time users just, uh, just looking around in their area for an organization or a church. Uh, for example, and uh, are kind of a landing page where mobile apps is your workhorse and what you're going to see um, over and over again, um, people going back to.
And it's a form of communication that people require. They have to stay even with all the affairs of the day, and this is one way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a per- preferred method, absolutely. About 80, 80 uh, to 90% of the time, people are on their mobile devices. They're on some form of a mobile app one way or another. And when you want them, don't call them because they won't answer their phone. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. You have to text them. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so the second, the second worst thing would be email. Yeah. I, I hate that when I go to someone's website and it says, contact us, and mm-hmm. I click to that because I have to contact them mm-hmm. to, to talk to them, Yeah. and it's email. Mm-hmm. I go, oh, God, not even a phone number. <laughs> I hate you people. <laughs> so I reluctantly send an email. But uh, some people read their emails. See, I don't read my emails. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get a lot of them that are that are totally useless. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so it's not a preferred way of communication for me. So when I see an important email that I must respond to, mm-hmm. I'm be, I'm – I've already made up my mind that I don't want to write them back because Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just hate email. I don't know why that is. I have to change my attitude. Yeah, well, you're not the only one. I think uh, emails um, or push notifications, for example, are opened about 40, I think 40% more than emails are opened because you get so many advertisements and emails, rarely from a personal um, email touch that you actually want to read. And so it's just, you know, people are just deleting things. They're not even looking at it. What's the best form of communication if you have to get the word out? Oh, it's got to be a notification, push notification. There you go. Mass message to everybody who has your app. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a condition that I should have. Or we should have that on the KPQ app, shouldn't we? Absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to mm-hmm. talk about that in the meeting. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brian Beaumont has been with us. Subsplash is a company that's relocating to town. And there'll be others to come. Is there room in the uh, incubation uh, uh, place down there at Pibus for uh, for further companies? Are more people more people coming to do as as you've done? Yeah, I think our stay is about uh, 18 months, if I remember correctly, and it's kind of like an entry level to Wenatchee. Now we're actually looking for permanent space right now uh, for the next phase after the 18 months. Have you been shopping? Uh, I believe so. Mm-hmm. What do you? What did? Or I don't know. Maybe you're not going, but what did they see that they like? Where do they think they're moving? Oh, there's lots of ideas, but definitely we're looking around in Wenatchee um, and and making a home here. So I don't know particular uh, spots, um, yeah, but we're we're definitely looking at that next step already. Well, I'm glad we met. I'm glad you guys are on your feet. Sounds like after 10 years that I didn't know you were there, but now the world's going to catch up with your efforts. Yes, sir.